sheer number, sheer amount of drama between this, this is the last that five years ago and now is insane. Um, a lot has happened in the world, but uh, here we are. Okay. Yeah, that's it. It's a beast. Um, so, uh, you know, at Tesla, we don't make slow cars. Uh, we don't make this. So this thing has crazy power relative to a, a, a diesel truck. Uh, I mean, we're putting this to use in the real world. Yeah. So that that truck's clocking at an 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice. You'll notice that speedometer is climbing. Yeah, we're going 6% percent and the hour so Yeah, buckle in. Don't worry, we brought lots of snacks. Yeah. yeah. Standard trip. Down the five, up grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. Yeah, we got the bypass on the way station, but you know, running full 80, or just under 82, full deliveries, nothing to hide. Yeah, real, real world, real, real, it's, yeah. You hey, did take one restroom break for, there, there is a required mandatory 30 minute break within the first eight hours of operation. Okay. Took a small restroom break, but that was it. Yep. All right. Cool. So aerodynamic efficiency obviously matters a lot. You can see it's, it's uh, shaped like a bullet. It's really aerodynamic. Um, and uh, that, that helps a lot. So we get uh, less than two kilowatt, uh, hours, two kilowatt, kilowatt hours. hours a mile. Yep. So. And that's the name of the game. Yes. Yeah. Efficiency there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's really efficient uh, in every way. And, uh, I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. Yes. We went to the wind tunnel with um, this really cool model, rolling road, the whole nine yards, and pulled in a lot of the learnings that all of our features car side that you know, give us such great real world efficiency there and really want to make sure that the, you know, the truck and the trailer have to work together. You know, this is a combination, this is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might not, you know, you have to think bigger when you're driving it. <laughs> uh, but it's not like, uh, it's not hard to drive, it's really easy. And we put the center, it put the see the center for max visibility, low floor, you can stand up in the cabin. Yeah, and that's actually a really big deal. I mean, Talk about you on, like yeah. you're able to stand up just fine. And the you know, nice thing is, is that if you're a truck driver and you're out during the day, it's, you know, it's cold, snowy, whatever. You can get in and this isn't a sleeping cab, it's a day cab. You can still stand up and you can you know, shed your jacket, put it on the wall. So, you know, one of the things about a, a commercial truck is that the reliability has to be extremely high. So, it's got to be, got to be running continuously, can't break down. Uh, it's got to handle every kind of weather. Uh, uptime is is super important for any kind of semi truck. So we've we've tested durability in every kind of weather, every kind of environment. Um, I mean, you can, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, so even just we've driven Donner. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But we've been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that. You know, in the uh, virtual side, touch the suspension dump, so you can, it's very easy to uh, attach the trailer. Uh, so it saves time and money. It's uh, much more efficient. The driver's home, sir. Yeah, I mean, really, we're trying to extend the idea of this efficiency from not just while you're on the road, but into the yard as well. Just before and after the truck has done its job on the road, because that means that you know, drivers at the end of the day are spending less time at the yard and they're getting home earlier. It makes their lives easier. We got a light test that's easy to execute, helps with clients, there's all these little things that's in my truck. Because um, if you look at the actual unit volume, it's it's small compared to passenger vehicles. So for passenger vehicles, you know, this is on the order of uh, almost 100 million that are sold every year. And whereas uh, tr semi trucks, it's uh, like you know, for four or five hundred, it's just consistent with the Tesla mission. Because sometimes they get asked, like, well, you know, shouldn't a Tesla just produce like uh, you know fast cars or, or premium cars or whatever it's, it's like but but what's our actual mission our actual mission 51 billion miles driven I don't know is more every every day um, 
So we're, we're using our existing drive units, power electronics, uh, infotainment, uh, the, our super efficient uh, heat pump uh, HVAC system, uh, and uh, state-of-the-art inverters. So we're able to leverage uh, the existing uh, powertrain and uh, elements that are already made at volume uh, in order to uh, achieve extreme efficiency of, of cost and capability. All right, so yeah, um, we've got a tri-motor uh, powertrain system, so and they're, we're using the uh, Pavno wrap sleeve, so essentially we're using the, 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 the plaid uh, Model S, Model X uh, powertrain, uh, and, um, but it, we're, we're and, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect. Uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, yeah. so the efficiency is actually much greater in crude. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on the highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire Which is 82,000 pounds. And uh, by the way, the reason we can actually do 82,000 pounds is that there's a 2,000 pound extra uh, that's allowed by law for electric trucks. So you get a little bit of an uh, advantage on the uh, on the on the weight side. Um, you, you can basically pull 82,000 uh, pounds uh, on uh, at cruise using just, and the only thing that's doing that is a tiny little motor on one axle. Oh, that big well, football size, man. Yeah, yeah you can else. carry it. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like a you know. And you, you can check it in your luggage. Good luck that, doing that with a diesel engine. And one of those is more powerful than a diesel. Yeah. Yeah, just that, just that one little guy is, is more powerful than a regular diesel engine on, on a, on a semi-truck. Um, but it's just, I find it like amazing that this enormous thing can be pulled by something that you can carry in your hands. It's like, wow, that's power density. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, and then in terms of, you know, so we talk power, you want to talk efficiency? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, some people out there say it can't be done. Um, I don't know who might say that, but uh, <laughs> I've heard rumors. Um, and uh, so we just did it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we're going to post the whole video unedited <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no jump cuts. Yeah. And th this wasn't, you know, some ultra clean, precise test track simulation or somewhere we, you know, just shut down a road. Nope, this is real world. You know, this is over grapevine. This is with traffic. This is true 500 miles. You know, we were loaded just under 82K. You know, we didn't, no special aero treatments. Yeah. The truck came off the line, shook it down, made it run. That's it. Yeah, it was like no fast moves here. No, nope. <laughs> be clear. It's not like, oh, and what what did, what tricks did they pull? Were, were there actually a whole bunch of tricks we could have pulled? Yeah, and didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, you know, like as Dan said, like no no special aero treatment. Uh, the oh, and by the way, we should mention there was no charging. Like, we charged the yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, we didn't stop the charge. Single yeah, single driver. One truck. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like 500 miles, like with no load, with special aero and special everything. It's like fully loaded go, going from the Bay Area. We actually had to like go a bit north to get to, you know, actually add to get to 500 miles because you can, you know, uh, LA to the Bay Area is less than that. Well, we got all the way to San Diego. So we have, oh, okay, that's great. what we yeah. stretched out on the side of the net. And, uh, I mean, you want to see the video? I mean, yeah, we, yeah. we have the proof. Absolutely. So. It's only a, a sustainable energy infrastructure, so you're going to have all, all aspects of the, of the energy question answered. Uh, sustainable power generation, uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with uh, solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support. <laughs> um, and, and uh, geothermal and many others, but uh, things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we uh, you want, you want, but, but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy, so when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy, and you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with the spike loads. Yeah, and our semi-customers are actively deploying this today, and we're working with them so that they have the pathway to get towards the 100% you know, sustainable future. 
know, but we have all of this at our disposal, you know, commercial solar and, and Megapack, and you know, Megapack is great because not only can it do things like heat shaving you know, or some of the other uh, energy modulation, but it also provides a form of redundancy and backup. I mean, if we're going to ask you know, a fleet to take on these trucks and run them, they need to ensure that they're going to be able to charge them and keep their fleet running and get the amount of power out, and, and that's one of the things that we can do with the Megapack on site as well. To charge a, a truck like this quickly, you need a uh, high power charger. So, we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Yeah. Um, and it's a next generation immersive cooling, so it's, it's liquid cooled. Uh, it's a sustainable energy infrastructure. So, you've got to have all, all aspects of the, of the energy question answered uh, sustainable power generation. Uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So, the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with uh, solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support, <laughs> um, and, and uh, geothermal and many others. But the things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we uh, do what you want. But, but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy. So when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy. And you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. Yeah, and our semi customers are actively deploying this today. And you know, we're working with them so that they have the pathway to get towards you know 100 percent sustainable future. You know, but we have all of this at our disposal, you know, commercial solar and mega pack. And you know, the mega pack is great because not only can it do things like peak shaving or some of the other uh, energy modulation but it also provides a form of redundancy and backup. I mean, if we're gonna ask you know, a fleet to take on these trucks and run them, they need to ensure that they're gonna be able to charge them and keep their fleet running and even the amount of power outage. And that's one of the things that we can do with the Megapack on site as well.